From now onwards, we are going to start with an all new series on discrete mathematics and this is the first lecture of discrete mathematics course in which we are going to have an introduction to discrete mathematics, who is the target audience, why discrete mathematics, what is discrete mathematics and finally at the end of the lecture, we are going to have a quick look into the syllabus. Now let's get started. Now who is the target audience? This course is definitely intended for students who are preparing for GATE and other competitive examinations. Of course, the students especially who are preparing for GATE, especially if they are computer science students, then definitely this course is for them because we are going to cover a lot of topics related to GATE in this particular course. Students who want to learn competitive programming will also get a lot of benefits from this course. Because in competitive programming, discrete mathematics is a very important subject to learn. Apart from that, college going students who want to learn discrete mathematics as this might be the course in their syllabus, then they are most welcome to take this course. And everyone who wants to learn discrete mathematics as a whole or maybe a small subset of this subject. Maybe it is possible that you want to learn a small subtopic in this discrete mathematics subject or maybe you want to learn this whole subject, then you are most welcome. Now let's understand why we need to study this subject called discrete mathematics. It definitely develops your mathematical thinking, there is no doubt about it. It improves your problem solving ability because it is after all a mathematical subject, therefore it improves your problem solving ability as well. If you are a computer science student, then no need to go anywhere else because discrete mathematics is for you. Discrete mathematics is important to survive in subjects like compiler design, databases, computer security, operating system, automata theory, etc, etc. Discrete mathematics course is very important to survive in these subjects because this will act like a foundational subject for many courses like these. Therefore, this is very important subject to study. Apart from that, there are many problems that can be solved using discrete mathematics. So these are all the problems which can be solved using discrete mathematics. Like for example, sorting the list of integers, finding the shortest path from your home to your friend's home, drawing a graph with two conditions that you are not allowed to lift your pen, you are not allowed to repeat edges. I would encourage you to please try to draw this graph available over here without lifting your pen and you are also not allowed to repeat the edges. Try drawing this graph on your own. How many different combinations of passwords are possible with just 8 alphanumeric characters? This is also a very important problem which can be solved with the help of discrete mathematics. Encrypt a message and deliver it to your friend and you don't want anybody to read that message except your friend. After studying the subject called discrete mathematics, we would be able to solve these different problems very easily. Now let's try to understand what is discrete mathematics. Discrete mathematics is the study of discrete objects. Please note down this point. Discrete mathematics is the study of discrete objects. Discrete means distinct or not connected. Please note down this point as well. It is not a branch of mathematics. It is rather a description of set of branches that have one common property that they are discrete and not continuous. This is also a very important point to note. This is not a branch of mathematics. It is rather a description of set of branches. That is, it can be a collection of set of branches that have one common property that they are discrete and not continuous. Now let's try to understand the difference between discrete and continuous. The whole world of mathematics is divided into two realms, discrete and continuous. Okay, now let's try to differentiate between discrete objects and continuous objects. Natural numbers are discrete. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are all natural numbers that are starting from 1 and going up to infinity. Between 1 and 2, there is no number. There is a sharp transition from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 and 4 to 5 etc. Suppose I ask you to draw a graph for 
y equals x where x belongs to natural numbers and y belongs to natural numbers then how a graph will look like this is how a graph will look like isn't that so here this is an x axis and this will be a y axis right in this graph you can observe distinct points y equals to x means when y is 1 x is 1 we are going to plot a point when y is 2 x is 2 we are going to plot another point when y is 3 and x is 3 we are going to plot another point and so on this is the graph of y equals to x where x belongs to natural numbers please note down x belongs to natural numbers and y also belongs to natural numbers please observe the gaps in between as i already told you discrete means distinct or not connected as you can see we are not getting a continuous line over here we are only getting distinct points which are not connected with each other therefore this graph is a discrete graph on the other hand real numbers are continuous for example between 0 and 1 you will find out infinite number of points like 0.0001 0.0000001 0.1001 and so on now let's consider the graph of y equals to x where x belongs to real numbers and y also belongs to real numbers this is how a graph will look like right here in this graph you can observe that we are getting a continuous line like for example between 1 and 2 you will find infinite number of points and it seems like a line between 1 and 2 and similarly between 2 and 3 also there are infinite number of points between 3 and 4 also there are infinite number of points between 4 and 5 also there are infinite number of points and so on right therefore we can say that we are not getting any gaps and we are getting a straight line therefore this graph is a continuous graph right now let's consider one more example Digital clock is discrete in nature because there is no continuous time and transition from one time to another time is very sharp like for example consider this clock suppose it is right now 10 hours 42 minutes and 57 seconds transition from 57 seconds to 58 seconds is very sharp there are no points in between 57 and 58 therefore digital clock is one example which we can say that it is discrete in nature On the other hand analog clock is continuous in nature in analog clock hour minute and second hands move smoothly over time we are considering the clock where minute hand hour hand and second hand sweeps around the time smoothly we are not considering those analog clocks in which there are sharp transitions between one time to another time we are considering a clock in which the second hand minute hand and hour hand sweeps around the time very smoothly now let's consider the syllabus of discrete mathematics in this course we are going to talk about propositional logic and first order logic in which we will have a lot of discussion about what is propositional logic what is first order logic what is predicates and quantifiers and so on we are also going to have a discussion on set theory and then we simply move to relations and functions and then finally to partial orders and lattices We are also going to have a lot of discussion on combinatorics. We will study permutations and combinations, basics of counting techniques, and certain other advanced counting techniques in this particular topic. We will also talk about graph theory, and we will have a lot of discussion on this topic as well. Graph theory is very very important from computer science perspective. Therefore, we will study this topic very deeply. Apart from that, at last we are going to cover group theory. which is also a very important topic to study okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this lecture